Nella, thank you so much for being here on the Dali Talks podcast. It's been a long time coming, hasn't it? <laughs> yes, it has. I'm glad to finally be able to make it. I'm super excited. Yeah, me too. So I, uh, first of all, I had to invite you on here because you're Nicaraguense and I am too. Yes. <laughs> and it's, I know. <laughs> yeah, we're so, hard so cool <laughs> when um, you told me you're Nick, 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 I was like, really? Me too. Mm -hmm. And we're in the same state. <laughs> exactly. We had so much in common. So we had yeah. to do something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still have to do the, the in-person meetup. Um, right. But yeah, so I wanted to invite you on here because, of course, you um, do something that is re related to, to what I do. You are a life coach and counselor for teen girls and young women. And this is something that we so, so need, especially among our Latinas. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So before we dive right in to what, what you do and everything, tell us a little bit about your background. Where'd you grow up? How did you get interested into this field, in this field? Um, so yeah, tell us more. Yes, for sure. So well, as you know, I'm from Nicaragua. I was born in Nicaragua. Um, my parents um, immigrated to the U.S. when I was two years old, and I grew up in California, the Bay Area, um, most of my life. And um, now I live in, in the Washington, D.C., Maryland area. Um, been here for about eight years, but, you know, most of my um, time I grew up in, in California. And ever since I was young, even since I was a teen myself, I was always attracted towards, I knew that I wanted to help people. And I was always attracted to other adolescents. Um, so, and it all started with a youth group that I was in and um, I became a peer mentor. And, you know, then I went on and to college and studied psychology. And then I decided I wanted to, bec wanted to become a school counselor. Um, and, you know, I went to grad school for that. Um, got my master's in counseling education. And um, I've been doing that for about 13 years now. And um, recently, a couple of years ago, I decided I wanted to do life coaching. And, you know, then, it, and I started doing life coaching and career coaching with adults mainly. But then one day it kind of just dawned on me that, you know, life coaching for teens. And, you know, that was perfect because I already had all this experience working with adolescents. And I feel that, you know, um, I think that coaching, life coaching can be so impactful for adults. And I thought, you know, if we can start earlier, um, it, you know, like what can be achieved with teens if we could just start earlier and, um, you know, start embedding those concepts earlier on. Um, so then it was kind of like a no brainer. I thought like, why didn't I think about this earlier? So yeah, so now I'm doing both. I'm doing life coaching for teens, for teen girls and young women, um, you know, and I'm also um, working with um, kids at schools. Yes, Nella, this is so important, like I said earlier, um, because I was sharing before we started the interview that just to find a, a Latina psychologist, and although I know it's a different field, it yeah. is so hard, so hard, especially yes. when people live like in areas like where I live, where it's predominantly white, no diversity, um, and we really, really need to have more women, more Latinas go into this field and help our, our youth. And I really love that you're a life coach and because there's so much stigma around counseling, like psychology, mm -hmm. you know, the, med yes. the medical yes. um, version, I think that more parents are, will be open-minded to working with a life coach, which I know that For some sure. people are like, oh, but it's not the same thing. You don't get that clinical side, but sometimes you don't need that clinical side. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yes, no, you brought up a great point because, um, you know, I, I guess like maybe I, I'm not sure, you know, everyone, if everyone in the audience knows what coaching is, but I wanted to um, start a little bit talking about more about what coaching is and coaching versus therapy. But, you know, with life coaching, um, you focus more on the present and the future. And, you know, you look at goal setting, but also helping people identify maybe any blocks that may be getting in the way of them achieving their goals. So it could be also a lot of mindset work that sometimes we don't realize how impactful mindset is when it comes to, uh, you know, achieving our goals or taking actions towards different things. And that's what coaching is. Whereas therapy, 
um, you know, therapy is great too. And depending on the, on the, on the person's need, you know, they may be a fit for either or, or for both, depending on where they're at. Um, but with, with therapy, the focus is more, you know, the therapist, um, or the clinician, the professional is in charge, um, of setting the agenda or diagnosing if, you know, that plays a role in it. They focus more on fixing, you know, and maybe like something that impacted them that has impacted them in their past. So the focus is more on the past and how that has um, impacted them now, whereas coaching is more in the present and the future. And the client is more in charge and setting the agenda. And as a coach, what we do is just, you know, but we believe that all the answers are within the client and it's just bringing that out of them. So bringing their best version out of them and helping them see that. Yeah. Um, I thank you so much for explaining that because I know that the term life coach is still pretty new to a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. The, the pandemic definitely helped <laughs> get more, yes. more yeah. awareness out there, but yeah, we still need to um, understand what it is. And the other thing too is, can you talk a little bit about how do you choose your clients and how would you like your clients to choose you? Yeah, well, I think that it's, um, it has to be a fit, you know? So I, I don't want to think like I choose my, they, I choose them just as much as they choose me as well. Um, so usually what happens is, um, and if it's with a teen that, you know, is under 18, usually what, what will happen is that the parent will reach out to me and I will have a, um, phone call with the parent just to get more information, learn why they want to want coaching um, and just see if it's a fit. And then after that, I would meet with the team more like a meet and greet. And if it's, you know, a fit, you know, not just for me, but also for the team. And if I, I think that, you know, they're a good candidate for coaching, um, then, you know, and, and they also want to, um, want the coaching, then we will move forward with actually enrolling them as a client. Um, and the reason why that is important too, is because I have to see, you know, get more information about their history and see if they would be a good fit for coaching, or if maybe therapy would be a better um, fit for them, depending on what they're going through. Mm, Nella, that's so important that you mentioned that because there are the type of coaches that will take anybody just because they want to get paid. Yes. And there are those who are really, truly look out for the person. Yes, exactly. It's, yeah. you know, unethical. And, and yeah, nowadays, that's the thing that anybody can call themselves a coach. Um, and, the, you know, you really have to kind of do your research or see if they're sort of, or, you know, sometimes there, there have, I came across with really good coaches that haven't been certified too, but you want to make sure that they have your best interest in hand and not just you know, wanting to get paid, like you said. Right. Yeah. And the experience too, because, exactly. yeah, yes. because they might not have those credentials, um, but the experience is definitely always going to a right. way because I've seen people who have gone to Harvard and they can't really. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I cannot agree more. And you know what? It's funny because I tell um, some of the teams I work this, you know, all the time, especially when they're planning on you know, for what college they're going to go to and all that, you know, at the end of the day, like what's the most important thing, whether you go to Harvard or community college and then transfer, like it, you know, it's just get experience in turn, because that's what it really comes down to. Like you said, it could be, you know, a practitioner that is, looks good on paper, but, you know, can't really help you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So do you offer more like a one, uh, one-on-one? -on -one yes. Right now I only offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and I get, um, you know, clients started as a three month program working one-on-one -on -one weekly. Okay. I love that. In any courses or anything like that, that you are offering right now? Not at the moment. Right now I'm just focusing on one-on-one, -on -one, um, and just, you know, really helping um, the teens with that one-on-one -on -one aspect and focusing, um, very um, tailoring it to, you know, that specific client's needs because everyone's needs are different. Um, so I really like that one-on-one -on -one aspect of it. Do you offer any of the, uh, the um, coaching in Spanish? I'm sorry? Do you offer it in Spanish? Yes, I'm fully bilingual. So if, you know, at the moment I haven't had anyone want it in Spanish, but I, that is an option if somebody wanted it in Spanish. Yes, for sure. 
Yeah, good. I'm glad. <laughs> Because yeah. nuestra gente lo necesita muchísimo. Por supuesto que sí. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know I was telling, um, I was speaking with uh, Donateo, who's um, a really amazing person, about the importance of letting our uh, mostly Spanish speakers know what things are available to them, especially yes. the newcomers. And I was thinking, man, I wish there was like a hub where we could go and say, oh hey, God, everybody, yes. bienvenidos, miren, esto necesita que saber, I agree. You know? Because, yes. yeah, because I mean, just from knowing like as a parent here in the United States, what are your rights? And then what does Nella do at her school? You know, like she's a, yeah. a counselor. What does that mean? You know, or like, what is a life coach or what's yeah. a parenting coach? Todas esas cosas. So. Or, you know, just kind of like we discussed in right now, like what's the difference between a life coach and a, uh, and therapy and, and, you know, what would be the better fit for my, for my kid right now or, you know, right. or for myself, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, all those are great. Um, So Nella, you said that you work with kids already. Um, you work with kids in schools. So you must see a ton of things from the kids. Yes. Can you give us an idea of what the top, I guess, issues are or challenges that you see kids experiencing and how you can help them? Yes. Well, I work in a high school. So, um, and I work with high school aged um, kids mainly. So Right now, especially after the pandemic, I mean, it's like the whole mental health piece. I mean, that is a huge, huge need right now in the schools. Like there's not, you know, we um, were at capacity from therapists, you know, the first month that school started already. Um, so definitely, especially, I think um, I have also seen like a race, uh, a rise in um, anxiety and depression, you know, especially after the pandemic, there has been, um, students or teens that, you know, got really used to being isolated and being home and they've had a really hard time transitioning back to school and being around people has given them a lot of anxiety. Um, also developmentally and academically, you know, some of them are two years behind, um, you know, since the pandemic. So, you know, definitely a lot of all of that, like, Um, emotionally and developmentally, um, you know, um, behind just struggles overall. Um, and, you know, uh, social media also is a big one sometimes. And I know that you know this because this is your cup of tea, but, you know, the whole bullying sometimes or, or um, I guess, aggressions that go on in social media, especially sometimes between girls and, and boys too, you know, of course. Oh, yeah. um, so there's been a lot of peer conflicts as well, because I think back to the same issue that, um, you know, they were at home for so long. So it's like now that they're, you know, in the school setting or forced to interact with their peers, some of them forgotten how or don't know how, or, you know, there's just been a lot of conflict or sometimes that, you know, they spent so, so much time in social media too, that sometimes that has spilled over and um a lot of those type of struggles as well there's something you said here nella about the the pandemic and that they don't you know mm -hmm. the association with other people one thing yeah. i've noticed is and this happened actually yesterday i took one of my kids to target we're walking around and she sees a friend with her mom she's like oh my gosh oh my gosh there's so and so And I'm like, chill. <laughs> <That's not laughs> human, you know? Yeah. She's like, oh my gosh, it's so embarrassing. I'm like, I don't get it though. Why? <laughs> and I, and so I approached the mom and I said, hi, I'm so and so. This is so my daughter. And she's like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, my daughter talks about her all the time. But they're both like blush red, como que como un tomate. And I, yes. and both of them. They don't know how to act. <laughs> right. And I'm like, does this happen all the time? I asked her and she says, all the time with all of her kids you know wow and I was like wow this is weird because I remember getting like that if I maybe saw my teacher yes me too, oh, me the too. teacher oh yeah. I don't want to see my teacher outside of the classroom you know? right but um but apparently this is more and more common and they have that anxiety mm -hmm. with like oh if I go say hi will they like me will they Uh, even yeah. respond. So how do you help children like that when it seems like it's all kids now that are experiencing? Yeah. How do you help that mindset? 
Yeah, and that's a great question because you know that's one of the, the the like the main topic I wanted to cover. I think so. A lot of my work with um, students, or you know, also especially as you know, with my life coaching clients, um, is mindset. You know, and like awareness, self awareness of because a lot of the times, you know, even as adults, sometimes we. Um, do things and, and and don't always think about it. Like why, so why did I do that or cause me to do that? Um, but I think with the teens, the whole mindset piece is just kind of um, helping them get that awareness as far as, you know, your thoughts that will dictate your feelings and your actions or lack of actions. So, you know, and it goes back sometimes to that positive self-talk as well, or that those positive beliefs. You know, if you internally have a certain thought or belief, like, you know, like the example you gave about giving in the store, you know, like I, or, or you know, the, or some of the students that don't want to go to school, like the, what's keeping them going from school or some of the, you know, thoughts that they're having or, or sometimes, you know, and I, I know in, in more psychological terms, they call it like thought distortions, you know, cognitive distortions. So we're thinking the worst is going to happen. You know, I'm going to go to school and, you know, I'm going to be called on in front of my peers. Like my teacher's going to ask me to answer a question and I'm not going to know how. So I'm not going to go to school. I'm, I just feel safer here. And let me just stay in my comfort zone. So helping them kind of, number one, become aware of those thoughts that are, and, and you know, making them have those feelings and like, causing them to kind of stay in their shell and then getting them, you know, so once they build that awareness, they can start, um, you know, maybe like empowering them to have better thoughts, you know, or more empowering thoughts um, and start taking action to get out of that comfort zone. And, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. It's, you know, little changing behaviors, you know, one at a time. And, um, you know, it, it takes time. That's why sometimes with coaching or with therapy, it, it can take months, um, you know, but I think that's the main thing is just getting them to be aware of what's causing them or the thoughts they're having them that, it, that are causing them to have those reactions or keep them in that comfort zone. And then little by little having, um, adapting their behaviors or having, getting them to take actions that are different, that will help get them different results. Yeah, you know, Nella, that's a good example. You just gave that um, you, you know, telling kids, okay, change that thought. Because I've done that with my children, right? Mm -hmm. But they're teens. And yeah. they're like, oh, mom. And I think that that's one of the benefits of going to a life coach. Because kids are, <laughs> they're going to listen to somebody else before yeah. mom and dad sometimes for certain things. And I think this would be a great benefit as to why my child should go to somebody like you. Yeah, because no, you'll yeah. challenge them, you'll give them those challenges, and, and then they'll do them because they know they have to come back the next week or whenever right, and right. tell you, hey, how did it go? Yeah, so. no, that's a great point that, you know, sometimes I think with parents, they're just so familiar and they're, you know, they see everything as nagging. But with someone else, <laughs> they're more used to, uh, you know, with someone else, they, they may be more willing to to try things, especially if it's something that they want to achieve or a goal that they want, you know, that you have, they have to also, ha there has to be something in it for them as well, too, right? You know, maybe they want to grow their friends of their circle of friends. Um, so, you know, okay, this is the goal that you have. Um, so, you know, what's, let's, um, let's take a step back and look at what is stopping you from getting there and, you know, getting them to understand that through that self-awareness. And then I think helping them understand it give, kind of gives them that aha moment. It's like, oh, okay. So, so yeah. So then you have the, the buy-in for them to kind of start taking those steps and those actions towards achieving that now that they understand how their actions are kind of keeping them from, from achieving those goals. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing that. Uh, my other question is uh, for children who say they, they don't want to work with a life coach, but you as a parent feel like they really need to, and they've already said no to counseling. Are there any, any hacks that you have for us to help our children understand 
the benefits or, or why it would be um, good to go and speak to a life coach? Yeah, that's actually a really, really good question. Um, I think that, so like most of the, the parents that reach out um, do so because they, they believe, you know, that their child can benefit from life coaching. Um, a lot of them have tried therapy before. Um, and, you know, maybe their, their, their teen is in a different place where they can benefit from like life coaching now or like a different approach. Um, and most of the time they haven't, some of, some of them, well, most of the time they haven't told the teen necessarily. Um, they kind of, even as a parent, want to learn more themselves about it. So, you know, we'll get on a call and, you know, like I will also kind of learn more about the teen and I will help, you know, I'll be honest with the parent, whether I think it's a good fit for them or not, which, you know, kind of like we discussed earlier. And, you know, then we just say, um, you know, there's not, you don't have to commit necessarily right now, then we'll have like a meet and greet. So I think some for some of the parents, what has helped is like either going on my website, you know, or, you know, if it's a, a particular coach that they want to work with and kind of putting a face to the person and seeing what they do there. Um, maybe if the parent knows that there's something in the teen's life that they want to improve or a goal that they have, they can kind of also um, approach it that way, you know, she can, or he can help you with, you know, A, B, and C. Um, you, okay, how about we just, you just agreed to a meet and greet with her. You don't have to agree with anything right now. And then when we have the meet and greet, you know, I'll kind of take over and we'll, um, you know, I'll explain to them what coaching is and how it can benefit them. And, um, you know, I haven't had a, a teen say no yet. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> very impressive. That's yeah. really good. <laughs> yeah, because as you're yeah. talking, I'm thinking if I were a teen, I think that the most scary part for me would be, what if I tell Nella something and then she tells my mom? Oh, that's a great, <laughs> great question. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so confidentiality is a big piece in coaching too. So just like counseling, it applies to coach as a coach. And I, that's one of the first things that I make it clear with both the parent and the teen, you know, whatever the teen, the teen is pretty much my client and um, whatever the teen tells me is confidential, right? Because it's, it's important for me to build that trust and that report with the teen. Otherwise it's, you know, it, it I won't be able to help them. Um, so I do make it very clear that, com you know, confidentiality is very important and that I, whatever they tell me, I will keep confidential. I will not go and tell the parent unless it's something that is putting them in harm or someone else um, that can hurt them. Then, you know, that's when I would bring confidentiality. But other than that, um, you know, everything is confidential, just like in, in counseling or therapy. So if they tell you that they're using drugs, is that something you report to the parents or something you keep to yourself like say it's just the kids are like oh it's just weed it's just gummies yeah. you know is that something reportable to the parents or yeah not? that's a good question because it you know it depends also in where the state and if it's legal or not um I sometimes so I I did have like a you know a similar situation and um, I'll ask them if they have had that conversation with the parent um, and if they haven't I will encourage them to do it and in that in this particular um, situation, they had, um, and the, sometimes a parent will share it with me too, because they also know that you know I'm bound by confidentiality. Um, and also, if I feel like it's it's something that's really putting them in danger, like you know maybe they're they're having it to the point to where if we're talking specifically about marijuana, like mm -hmm. depending also you know on the drug, right? Um, if I feel like it's really impacting them negatively, then that's something that I would report. Um, yeah, I can understand that because I know that there are a lot of kids that even now they use it as a, a way to cope with anxiety and it actually helps. Yes. And a lot of people, no matter how opposed they are, refuse to admit that it's yes. working for some because even the CBD products. Right, um, yeah, right. yeah. Thank you for answering that question because I'm pretty sure parents are thinking it. Because, um, yeah. you know, we, there's so many... So many things that kids are being exposed to that we wonder like how much do they know and how much should I know that they know <laughs> to keep yeah. them safe because they feel in the teen years that they know it all. I mean, my own 
15 year old. <laughs> she's yes. she's pretty, she told me, she's told me at least twice, well, I'm practically grown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, okay. I think they're grown. Yeah. <laughs> they, they honestly I mean, believe, believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, because it, it, it's also, they're in that stage where um, they're kind of outgrown the kid part. They're not quite an adult yet, you know, but, you know, but there's, their brain is still developing technically. So um, yeah, they, they still have some growing up to do, but they're also learning how to like be adults and they're learning how to transition into adulthood as well. Um, yeah. And something that, you know, I do talk with parents because actually with my coaching, it's, so the sessions are with the teens, but I do have two um, parent coaching sessions um, in between like one midway through the program and at the end, just to kind of um, check in with them about how everything is going. And even that is confidential. I talk to the teen and I let them know that you know, I, I will only share with the parent about, you know, whatever it is that you want me to share. And I kind of go over, um, it's like an overall impression about our, you know, our work together. And I make sure that the teen is comfortable with what I'm going to share. Um, but, you know, a lot of the times also it's helpful for me because the parents will also share, you know, different things that are helpful for me to continue supporting the teen in my work as well. Um, I love that. Actually, you're the first life coach that I hear say that. Oh, like, yeah? <laughs> well, yes, which that's really nice because one of the things that I do with my kids is um, a psychologist is that I reach out to her and ask, hey, how is everything going? Do you feel like there's enough progress? Because I feel like this area has improved and not so much here or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, whatever's going on. Um, but I was surprised as the parent that the psychologist wasn't coming to me and saying, Hey, well, are you seeing any difference? Instead, I was like, well, let me reach out to this lady. <laughs> yeah. You felt like you're left in the dark, you know, right. like what's really going on. Yeah. And then I was left wondering, well, how long should I wait yeah. to, to check in? And yeah. also, and, and the same thing too, because I, I told my daughters, I said, Hey, I'm going to check in with your, um, therapist just to, I'm not going to ask anything, you know, private. Yeah. Um, because I, I feel like counseling um, with a therapist, with a, you know, a psychologist is not about, oh, something went wrong. It's right. kind of like maintenance for the mind. Yes. Yes. I and think I, yeah, we all need it, you know, and I love that you said that. I think you put it perfectly it is like maintenance for the mind yeah yeah and I'll let some people are like eh, whatever I'm like no no look yeah we all go through stuff and then we don't realize that we're going through stuff until it's already passed and then you're like whoa I went through that and didn't even realize it had somebody noticed it or somebody you know had I spoken to somebody about it I probably would have figured it out and I wouldn't have waited this long to process the whole thing yeah so and and with my kids um you know we moved pandemic so I'm like oh kids you need to go whether you think you, you don't or not you need to go talk to someone aside from mom and dad because yes. or, or like Titi and grandma yeah because family is different than in our right. yeah right. I love that yeah and that's another thing I love too about life coaching it's like you're the outsider you're you're looking with a non uh an Bias. unbiased yeah. yeah a lens yeah um, and that gives me peace of mind too yeah um, and for I sure. actually even like it when the person doesn't have children, at least for the parents, because I yeah. also like getting the perspective of people who don't have children. Yeah, uh, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, there you go. I don't have children. Like, yeah. And, and that's um, a benefit because um, from what I've heard, people who don't have uh, children have kind of like a, a, a different lens, which allows them to connect with the kids. Yeah. You know? sure. I, yeah. I think sometimes because as, as a parent or family, um, you're very attached to certain um, situations or outcomes. And I think like having that outsider, like you said, look in that lens of, you know, especially, um, and I know like, you know, with me to my background, working with teens for so many years, like I think bringing in that, um, different perspective also as a non-parent and more as a supporter of the team and seeing, you know, the different dynamics sometimes within teens and their families and friendships and all that. It's um, helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. This sounds really great. So how long is your program, the whole thing? 
So um, I have a three month and then they, they have the option to renew for another three month. Um, you know, again, depending on what the, um, the need is for the client, but I'm actually seeing kind of getting a, a feel for it because I might be extending them to um, six month programs, but for right now it's three months with the option of renewing after the three months if they feel like they still need it. Yeah, that sounds really good because maybe the three months are enough. And yeah, 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 it's really depends on, you know, on the teen and um, or the young women and what they have going on um, and what their goals are. And how often do you meet with them? During Weekly. The yeah. Oh, that's once really a week good. for 45 minutes, sometimes 60 minutes, depending on, you know, what um, they have going on that for that specific session or what we're doing. That's great. And then you focus on not just, um, say mindset by other life things, right? Like yes. academics, yes. relationships with parents or boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. So anything from, um, mindset to future direction, to relationships, um, friendships, um, parent communication. Um, you know, sometimes we'll, we may have like a specific goal that we're working towards, um, like it could be, um, you know, trying to figure out what they want to do after high school, or it could be um, a goal of making better decisions, you know, when it comes to friendships, um, or it could be, um, you know, practicing more self-care and well better wellness. Um, but within those goals, you know, the, the whole mindset and self-awareness piece is good and it's weave into the sessions. Um, and even though we may have a particular goal, like, you know, sometimes things happen at school or with the families, like that kind of throw them off for a loop. So if they want to just kind of focus on that during that session, it's, you know, they really drive the session depending on what they have going on and what they want. And if not, you know, we'll do other things, um, you know, especially with teens, sometimes for some of them, it's hard for them to, um, especially the younger ones, to learn the specific words to kind of describe their emotions and, you know, things that are going on. So we'll do a lot of activities to kind of help drive the conversation. Um, and sometimes through those activities, it's easier for them to, to speak on certain things rather than just asking them. <laughs> I love what you just said that yeah. you're actionable because that too, that's another thing that I, as a parent look for in anybody who's going to be helping my child. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to just come and talk to you like a friend or anything like that. Yeah. Or like vent. I want action. I want yeah. like, what are you going to do? <laughs> you <know>? Yes, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like if they have, for example, if they're expressing, oh, you know, I'm doing really bad in this class, I, my study habits aren't really well, then okay, let's set up a plan for you to have better study habits, you know, or like, what, what can you commit to? Um, and, you know, we'll go over it step by step, you know, depending on what, uh, what it is, what it is too. Yeah. Oh, I love it. This is, this is great. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. be having a conversation with my kids. <laughs> I'm like, hey. yeah. so because I, you know, they, um, Kids just, they need help and they don't realize it. Yes, and yes. Parents, like I try to help, but then if I try too much, I, I they're like, oh, there she goes again. She's trying to control yeah. us. I'm like, no, 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 I'm just trying to help. And yes, just they don't know what they need until, you know, they, they're given what they need. And they're like, oh, I really needed this. And I didn't know, you know, thank <laughs> you, mom. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, before we wrap it up, I wanted to ask you something very specific, actually, because yes. one of the things that I noticed is that kids care so much about what others think of them. I'm 43. And I love that at this age, I'm caring less and less. And I feel like I still care. Yeah, too much. I, I, and, yeah, and I, I hear like, the, yeah, they I hear the older you get, the less you care about what people think. And I'm like, gosh, if I could just give my kids the lack of caring that I have right now at their age, it yeah. would be so like, it would freedom, uh, it would give them freedom from these pressures that they feel. So yeah. can you talk to us a little bit about anything that any tips that parents can implement? Yeah, no, I love that. That's a great question. I think it, you know, it comes back to, um, Again, not only the self-awareness, but also the self-love piece, right? Because 
when you can, and, and, and this is why I'm so po um, passionate about coaching like teens and, and, and especially like teen girls, because um, I think sometimes as women, we, we struggle with that a little bit more maybe than some guys. Um, and I think that whole like um, just kind of being yourself unapologetically you know, early on is so powerful and can open so many doors if they learn that, you know, early on. Um, so that is one of, you know, the, the focuses also in coaching is like, how can you practice more self-love? And I think, um, you know, kind of getting them to kind of see all the connections with all of that and kind of like helping them maximize their potential, you know, without you know, get by getting out of the comfort zone and not really caring as much what other people will think. Um, and I think part of, um, you know, the way that that can be done with families or with parents is just, I think, um, I think, I think like it goes back to kind of like what I, what I um, also wanted to talk about is the whole, like instilling that growth mindset early on. And, you know, I think, um, as parents, there's very different ways that you can go about that with teens or even early on with um, younger children. And I think one of them um, would be to learn how to embrace failure. You know, so for example, when they, um, if they make a mistake or they get a bad grade, not necessarily, um, you know, like having, I know that there's always that, that really thin boundary of like, okay, you have to be the parents and set structure, but also don't, um, you have to be very careful not to shut them down and not cause shame to them when you, when you know, when they make a mistake. So kind of like more focusing more on like, okay, you know, what did you learn about this? You know, how can you do, what can you do differently rather than like, you know, you shouldn't have done this and that and that, you know, or schooling you at them. I think um, focusing more on like, how can they grow from it? So that is a very practical and important piece as well. And also I think as a family and um, being a resilient family. So, you know, the way that you handle challenges as a family or adversity and focusing on, you know, yeah, this happened, you know, but, you know, this is how we're going to, overcome this and this is how this situation is even going to make us stronger um so i think those are very key and also um you know when talking about strengths and weaknesses um maybe um yeah very you know every time or when they made a made a mistake or something happened talking about the strengths but also looking at the weaknesses more as challenges and you know how they can improve in that area. Like, you know what, we all have something we can improve on and that's okay. That's what makes us us. Um, so, so yeah, so that's what I, I would say, because I think when we look at that, I think, you know, that the mindset and um, embracing failure and all of that, we're helping them build that resilience and having that resilience, I think helps with that self-love and that caring less than what others think because they know they're going to be okay at the end of the day right oh wow what how you just answered that question is um it's wonderful it's beautiful it's also like a testament of how you think about the issues and how you can help change the the mindset around uh, because you said something there about not shaming children when they make a mistake right i've been guilty of this i've done it i admit it, it you know we're like, human. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and i'm like we oh, do it to yeah, ourselves like, too we, you know oh, yes so oh, i think God. like another big piece is like paying attention to how we talk about ourselves and mimic that to our you know teens and kids um is big too because they pick that up as well yeah yeah oh that was gold i hope people play that back again <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah thank you oh wow okay so if people want to reach out to you how can they book a call with you yes so um they can either um go on my website which is www.nellacastro.com um they can also find me on instagram um and you know what my i just changed my um Instagram handle. It's um, underscore Nella Castro. So simple. Okay. I'll update that underscore. Yes. 
Okay. And um, yeah, I'm also going to be putting out um, pretty soon. It was, it's on my website too, but I have like um, a guide that I developed for parents on, you know, five habits of how, how to develop a growth mindset in your teens. Um, and, uh, you know, I mentioned right now a couple of the um, habits or the tips that I give parents, but you can also get that from my website. Um, if you go on and, and you can subscribe to my email list, I'm looking to, you know, um, grow that some more and just keep bringing in more information, valuable information to parents. And, um, you know, in the future, I'm also working on building a blog. So, you know, if you get on my email list, you'll be getting all that information. Um, and yeah, so fun stuff. Thank you. I love that. And a freebie. So I'll make sure that yes. that's the show notes. Okay. All right, let's wrap it up with something fun. Let's do yeah. something that um, let's, I'm going to ask you some questions so people okay. can get to know you a little bit more. Yes. Um, so answer this first thing that comes to mind. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Favorite childhood memory. Oh my God, so many. But I think the one that comes to mind is that as a family, we used to go every year to Lake Tahoe um, for Thanksgiving and spend things. We would rent a cabin and spend Thanksgiving there with other, you know, friends of the family, other family members. Um, and we used to go camping a lot too. Awesome. What about your favorite thing about being Nicaraguense? Oh my God. Um, I love the food, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Nicaraguan food is the best. Um, and you know, the people, everyone is just so nice and welcoming. I, well, I wish there was more here in the DMV area. Um, that's why I got so excited when you told me you were Nicaraguan because there's not that many, mm -hmm. um, in California, there was a little bit more, but I feel like in the, within the U S uh, Miami or Florida has all of them the most yeah <laughs> and overall in in the nation we are from what i read less than three percent oh wow of latinos yeah God. we're tiny tiny we <laughs> yeah. Are. yeah population all right next question let's see what is your most memorable um event result from one of your clients most memorable result um I think just kind of just seeing like the growth, you know, as and 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 her trying to, you know, especially also in making better decisions. And um, I think one of them was one actually she really surprised me um, in like in in a great way. Um, we were doing an activity. We um, came up with a personal. I had her come up. I gave her an overview of what a personal mission statement is. And she, you know, I gave her some time to work on hers, like not that long. And she blew my mind with how great and articulate and everything was. And, and, and yeah, and how she's kind of, uh, the steps she's taking to, um, to implement that. Mm, that sounds beautiful. I love it. And if you could give 13 year old Nella some advice, what would you say to her? That's a great one. Um, I would say, you know what, just trust yourself in the process. You're going to be okay. And kind of along the same things, what you said, like just, you know, um, care less about what others think or say, and just do you and, you know, everything will be okay. I love it. Great one. Yeah. Nella, thank you so much. I've really enjoyed this conversation. I hope that people call you and send their kids to you. Thank you. Yes, this was, you had some great questions. I, you know, it was good, good talk. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to come back again to the show and share some more of your wonderful tips. Yes, for sure. And, you know, once I have my podcast up and running one day, then you can come to mine. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you for being on the show. Okay. Thank you. Have a great one. I hope you really enjoyed that conversation with Nella Castro. She is an amazing coach. And I don't say that just because she's Nicaraguense. <laughs> um, it's, you know, I've been following her for a long time. I've had conversations with her and her background in education is so helpful because she's gotten to see a lot of the issues that children have, a lot of the youth have, and um, she can direct them. She can guide them in so many different areas, whatever it is they need, whether it's academics, whether it's mental health, social emotional learning, whether it's communication with 
parents or, or whoever, right? So please check out her page. And uh, if you feel like, well, I don't need to hire her, but I know a parent that could use her services and her, her children, then forward that information to them. And um, again, thank you so much for tuning in and you'll hear from me next week. Bye. Hey, did you like that episode? If you did, be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you may be listening and write a review. If you want more tips or some behind the scenes videos, make sure to follow my mom at Dolly Talks on Instagram. You can turn on notifications for her posts and stories as well. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. See you next time.